Hi everyone and welcome to our booth at the NAB 2019 show. We are excited to give you a peek into our camera section. We have a Marshall CV350 uh, CV camera, then a large Sony broadcast camera. This is a first for Skahoy and it's controlled by our RCPs. Well, basically all of them are. Then we have some length control right here. We have EVA1, JVC, HM660 and finally a Blackmagic camera. And these are all controlled by our, at this point, almost classic RCP controllers. They fall in two categories. We have either the RCP with the iconic joystick, you probably all love, and then we have the Colorfly, which is a powerful multi-camera package with motorized faders and a section with uh, knobs for adjustment and buttons for menu buttons for recalling settings and whatever you want to code into it. Now at the NAB show, because we really want to let you know and showcase how awesome configurations you can make, we have decided that many of these units control multiple cameras. In the first case, we have a classic RCP that just works with the Sony camera. So this is a first for Skahoy. This is CNA1, it's a Sony device and it has an ethernet port right here. On the other side, it has the 8-pin connector going over to the camera. So this box receives simple uh, Sony simple camera protocol commands from this RCP to shade the camera. So you have all the things you would expect. You have uh, iris, and of course, uh, what we also did was to, uh, this goes on under the hood, and you can't see it, but it's really awesome that the RCP does not only talk to the camera, it also talks to a video router, a HAA Kumo router that will bring up the source and the screen when I press the preview button or on top of the joystick. So now we see the Sony camera right here. So you see, I can do the shading as I'm used to. I have the ring on the joystick to adjust the master black of the picture. The master black and the iris are shown in these displays. And in the usual Skahoy style, we give you the option of having encoder knobs for master black as well. So you can adjust it on this encoder. You can of course go into uh, coarse fine mode so that you have larger steps going on, etc. We have auto iris right here. We can also inactivate the panel. It means that you cannot do anything with the joystick. It will not affect the camera. Then um, as this label explains, it is going to bring up the Sony camera on the front left monitor. And that was, as I said, an ex uh, example of using um, the uh, video router with the RCP. So color bars on off. We have color bars, yes. We have um, um, white balance, uh, uh, 6600 k override right there. We have then a menu, and the menu will change whatever you see up here. So this display, and that's um, across all implementations of the RCP, has tiles corresponding to these knobs. And you can see how nicely we color code them. So you can see red, green, and blue adjustment of gamma and flare in the camera. Over here, master gamma and master flare. And if we press this button repeatedly, you see it's toggling between red, green, blue, gamma, and white and black levels. So this is how you can access those parameters that you would like to, to adjust. Then, of course, I can adjust these parameters by using the knobs in fine and core steps and so forth. As I want, I can press and hold to reset parameters like that. Okay. So if I go here, I have access to other parameters like detail, ECS, I have the white balance I can set here. I have um, red, green, blue, white clipping, and also the master white clipping over there. I can go to skin tones, uh, face, width, level, saturation, etc. So we have implemented all of the SSCP protocol for these cameras. Not all of these features are actually implemented in this camera, but that's as you know from the RCP 1500 from Sony that um, depending on the camera, you have access to the features, of course, that the camera supports, otherwise not. So um, that's the Sony RCP, let's move on. So the next one is one of the RCPs that has an option of a motorized fader. So this fader is hooked up with a Blackmagic ATEM switcher. So you can see in the software up here that as I'm moving the fader, I'm adjusting the iris. And as I'm moving the fader in the software, if I wanted to do that, you can see the iris is following along with the fader action, or the action I do in the software. Interestingly, this panel, the Colorfly, is also hooked up with the RCP, 
So as I'm adjusting the, the iris on this one, you can see that the fader over here is following. Likewise, if I'm changing the fader here, you see the levels here, it's reflected over here. So, although there can be a little bit of delay between the two, there is perfect correspondence be between the values I'm setting, even for Master Black. That's also reflected over here. You can see that in the display right here. But there's much more to this RCP. We have access to multiple cameras. So we have it here set up for the ATEM switcher over there. We just looked at that. Then if we press on this selector here, we are selecting the Marshall camera. And you see, this is the Marshall CV350. It's serial controlled, it has VSCA connectivity, and therefore we map VSCA commands onto the controller. So you can see the exposure mode, which I can change right here. So I have access to the iris, shutter speed, and gain. And of course the iris is, if I adjust it up here, you can see that it's actually moving the fader. And of course you would use the fader to adjust the iris values. In this case, because the iris is discrete, it has like a number of steps. The, the fader will typically move like that. Uh, and that's a consequence of having discrete iris steps. Um, then we have the shutter speed mapped onto this one as well. So it's really close to uh, the operation that goes on down here. I want to take you to the next level because this is connecting to an NXT 910. Uh, frame synchronizer over here from Ensemble Designs. Cool little frame synchronizer, super compact form factor, and all those settings are brought down here. So what is a frame synchronizer? Well, it synchronizes frames, but it also has color correction built in quite often, which means we can adjust red, green, and blue levels for offset and gain and uh, stuff like that. We can have a simulated iris mode that is mapped to the joystick. Then on the color fly, we have many of these things as well. You already saw that the fader here is corresponding to the ATEM software. But if you go to camera number two, we are adjusting uh, commands to the Ethernet length link box here. So what is that? That is if you have a Sony camera that has length support like FS7, FS5, uh, it could be a C90. There's a number of cameras. It has Ethernet in the one end and in the other end it has the classic 2.5 millimeter jack coming out and then into your camera. So having that, it means that we can bring down controls that you need like auto iris toggle on and off, auto focus, gain, shutter speed. You can select these different, uh, you know, bring them up on the camera, white balance settings. You can navigate the menu. You can adjust focus and zoom on the camera. Well, basically anything you find in Sony's RMBP30. So RMBP30, the official Sony controller, all the um, length commands you find in that controller is also available in our Colorfly panel in this configuration. I think this is what I want to show you from the booth. The EVA-1 has its own video. It's such a powerful configuration that I can't cover it right here. This one is working with a JVC camera. It's coming up later this year. And over here we have the inline chain, which is simply another form factor working with, in this case, the Blackmagic camera. So, that's the uh, NAB 2019 booth from Skahoy, the RCP section right here um, with all these great cameras we support. Mm -hmm.